not okay. This needs to stop now. Hey, come back here. Oh, shit. I thought it was E2. What was that? I don't know. Bilbo knocked the white bowl off the... Oh, shit. I forgot how to look back at you if you try to run out. No. Oh, fuck. It tricked me. You know, games kind of do that sometimes. And now we proceed to an epic battle between two of the most powerful creatures ever to exist in fiction. And no, I'm not talking about Superman, so get, get, get out of here. Get get out of here, super, super stands. Yeah, Henry Cavill's not gonna be Superman anymore. Cry me a river. Aw. It's not gonna be Geralt either, so... Fuck instead he's going, this. instead he's moving on to something that he actually has control over. Warhammer 40k. And I can't wait to see what he's gonna do with it. Because... be interesting. Oh, yes. Because where he's going to executive produce it, and he's also going to star in, and I'm like, hell yes. It's gonna be dark. And grim, epic. Grim dark. And I want that. That's how it should be. People have been clamoring for a Warhammer 40k, uh, like, series that's been taken seriously. And who better than the former Superman and Geralt of Rivia? I mean, given, given what Netflix said they were moving on to, they were just like, Henry Cavill doesn't really fit into our future anymore as a Geralt of Rivia. And it's like, instead, we're going to tell our own stories and this and that and blah, blah, blah. Then they find do the out origins. it was because he wanted them to do it right, and they were sick of him telling them how to do it. Yeah, and they and they were just like, we're going to show him. We're going to show him with this new show that we're coming out with, the origin show, and everyone's going to love it. Everybody hates it. Everybody hates it, Netflix. That That's what you gave up. You... You gave in to the wrong people instead of giving in to the person who actually knew what the hell they were talking about. I mean, yeah, they're talking all kinds of shit about him, about how he's like the worst person to work with, just literally because he wanted them to make it a good show based off the books and the game. Like, no, the, inspired it's, by the books and the game. And it's the producers being pissed off the fact that their vision of the show isn't a hit. And it doesn't help that it was a woman that was in charge, so they're trying to say he was misogynist by not just listening to her and doing everything she said. Yeah, and I, I just don't understand this shit, dude. It's like, look, if someone's unhappy. Your like your lead actor is unhappy, and he's a fan of not not just the games but the books as well, and has read them, you know, cover to cover multiple times, getting ready to portray this character, and you're just like, no, we're just gonna do our own version of it, and uh, you know, people don't like it, they don't have to watch it. It's like, and then when people don't watch it, you get pissed off. You're just like, why aren't pe why aren't people liking what I put out there? Like, I don't it know. must be because I'm a woman, or because I'm of a race that is not white. I don't know anyone that's like, yeah, I'm gonna come out for you know season four that doesn't have Henry Cavill. In. No, I'm I'm not down for it. Me neither. I'm I I had we reacted nothing. to everything up until this point. So if they put out a season four, then that's a different series. We're not reacting. I'm not reacting to it. I'm not series. reacting to it. They can't. I know. Fuck that, dude. <laughs> you think I'm gonna? You think I'm gonna give those bastards my time? Even though, like, after all that, after all that, you know, they've done to Henry Cavill. Fuck them. I mean, look, I like Henry Cavill, and I really wish he could have stayed as Superman, but I find myself agreeing with James Gunn. We need to start over because nothing has, nothing like truly overwhelmingly great has come out of what is, what's been pushed out of the DC Expanded Universe. Other than Aquaman, Shazam, and the first Wonder Woman movie. Three films out of how many? Like ten? Ten? And like he still said like it's not 100% that Cavill won't return as Superman <coughs> But he's going back to like his origins when he's younger, so he wants someone younger to play him. And why not? Um, I mean, and and like I, I think he he could absolutely bring back Cavill and Jason Momoa and everybody like later on, you know, and just probably like, restart the the lore, you know. Yeah, and I just think that it, given the mess that that they found themselves in, you know, trying to go with the Snyderverse and then doing like a weird like anti Snyderverse, but then redoing the Snyder cut of Justice League, which I'll be honest with you guys, eh, mid, seven out of ten. I know there's some Snyder heads that got pissed at me over that because when I expressed 
Like, like I'm not going to be as excited about it. They were just like, on the Snyder Cut trailer that I released, they were just like, it's like, it's like these guys are just going to be so blown away. Like, they're going to be eating their words. And then when the movie came out, someone actually was like, on the, the reaction, they're just like, I bet you all feel stupid now. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> and I'm just like, I, I literally typed to him. I'm like, eh, 7 out of 10. It was, it was okay. I mean, it's better than the original. That I will admit that. I, I will admit it is better than the Whedon cut. But it wouldn't. it's not that hard to be better than the Whedon cut. But still, though, there was... There were so many people... There's still people who were clamoring for the Snyder verse to be restored. I'm like, it's over. Let it go. Zack Snyder's moved on. Other, pe like, other people are in charge now. It's over. Let it go. Ah, anyway, though, enough about enough about Superman and Henry Cavill and all the drama of the real world. Let's get into none of that was related to what we're actually watching today. <laughs> yes, it is because Superman has fought Go Goku twice and well, has won indirectly but, related. I indirectly, guess. yeah. And I, I I'm gonna make a, a I want to do something. I want to say if the winner of this. Should fight Superman. I would be down for that. Because, dude. Uh, as they always say, comics are going to win every time because they're at a different level than anime. So. I know, I know. Silver Age Superman is is God, basically. That's that's what he is. Silver Age Superman is God. He When you can literally move the entire cosmos with one breath, you're God. That's it. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, check this out. Here we go. It's a death battle! <coughs> One. Man, these things are so easy to find nowadays. Yes! Now, with this ultimate power, I can finally conquer Have the Gogeta world! Have fight Vegito! Uh, what? Oh, come on! It's the ultimate Dragon Ball question! Which fusion of Goku and Vegeta is stronger? Gogeta, the combo greater than legends, or Vegito, the mix who surpassed gods? Intriguing. They are in many ways identical, yet still quite different. Though in canon, they only have a collective total of three brief appearances. To truly determine who would win, let's examine all of their material. So that's Z, GT, Super, Movies, Games, Guidebooks, Toei's Twitter, even all the crazy Xenoverse and Hero stuff. Hold on to your Dragon Balls. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Yeah, I still couldn't fully tell you right now why oh, like, why they have two different fusions when the, the two same dudes fusing into the, together. <laughs> it's the know. earring, <clears throat> the Potara earring, and the dance. Oh, I thought it was like universally accepted that the earring was a less strong version of the actual fusion dance. I thought that was like well established in Dragon Ball Z that the earring was just for people who couldn't pull off the fusion dance. No, the fusion, no, the Patara earrings were reserved only for like the Kais so that the Kais could combine and fight threats as one entity. Hmm. I don't know. I guess my memory is off, but I thought for some reason that I remembered that when they used the earring, that was like a fusion that was just because they had learned the fusion dance. And then whenever they actually managed to pull off a fusion via fusion dance, it was like far more powerful than what they got with the result they got with the earrings. But well, it, there's probably a whole lot more that's happened since then. That's just could have well, gone either direction that I've only ever seen Z up to like also, not even the end of it. So. Also, the Patara earrings are potentially permanent, but they've separated in the past in various ways, but I, I guess they'll get into that whenever they show it. Imagine, it's 1995 and you're at a movie theater in Japan. You're there to watch Dragon Ball Z Fusion Reborn, and it's gonna be the most radical movie ever, dude! I mean, yeah, it was a little weird when Adolf showed up, but then it Ooh. happened. Goku and Vegeta were pushed to the brink with only one option left. They merged into a single being of amazing power, Gogeta! And that would be the greatest thing eight-year-old you ever saw. Yep. You peaked at eight. Fun fact, while Vegeta had already <laughs> debuted in the manga... Except that never earlier, happened for me. Vegeta was created first. After all, the movie had been in production throughout the previous year. 
Two Saiyans, the proud son of royalty and the lower class champion becoming one epic powerhouse? This is the true potential of Goku and Vegeta. Easily a top five Dragon Ball moment. Hey, nothing beats the first time we saw Super Saiyan, but, but I think this comes close. Yeah, Super was Saiyan was, was by the, the most insane shit ever. mysterious alien people who we never actually see. But I'd guess they like wearing crop tops with inflatable shoulder pads. Anyway, when Goku taught this fabled technique to go turn it drunks, it was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. This <laughs> is the fusion dance. On top of an incredibly precise movement routine, this technique requires both parties to match power levels in order to fuse successfully. A literal personification of the phrase, only as strong as the weakest link. It's pretty <laughs> Forgot about the fat version. Wait. It's like homeboy been uh, homeboy been hitting them pierogies pretty hard, huh? <laughs> Easy to screw up. I was gonna say, man, Go Tinks went to Krispy Kreme, and he shut down the Krispy Kreme. Trust me, but if you nail it, you're the baddest mother ever on the planet. Though not part of mainline canon, Goku and Vegeta first use this to battle Janemba, a demon basically composed of essence of evil. Probably smells like cats. Gogeta defeated Aye. him in less than two minutes. 20 years later, Gogeta would become canon to conquer one of the most dangerous entities in the multiverse, Broly. Obviously, Gogeta's super powerful, but I think his most underappreciated skill is how he comes up with awesome attack names. Like the Big Bang Kamehameha, Stardust Fall, Meteor Explosion, and the ultimate villain killer, Stardust Breaker. A fancy looking attack that completely obliterates all traces of evil within a target. That's how it took out Janemba in one shot. The guy was literally made of evil. Or can Damn. Weirdly enough, this is similar to Devil Man's Devil Might Be, which causes the evil within a person to explode and- Oh, you mean Spike? That guy's hilarious. Which obscure character are you going to reference next? Icarus? Sour Man? General Rildo? Oh man, that guy's just one letter up from General Dill. Uh, over the years, Goji <laughs> has achieved the empowered forms of Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan Blue, and even Super Saiyan 4 in his battle against Omega Shenron. Super Saiyan 4 is a totally unique branch of transformation. Instead of using Divine Key like Super Saiyan God, it taps further into Goku and Vegeta's Saiyan bloodline, giving them fuzzy red fur and teen goth eyeshadow. Goku has also claimed this form increases a Saiyan's inherent aggression. Though you wouldn't know it with Gogeta. He basically becomes Dragon Ball's Bugs Bunny, reveling and messing around with his foe any way he can. Until the fusion runs out. That's right, the fusion dance has a time limit of 30 minutes. This can be reduced even more if Gogeta uses up a lot of energy. Against Omega Shenron and GT, he's split apart after about 10 minutes. Just more evidence that the amount of power Gogeta possesses is enormous. Even repeatedly striking Broly so hard that the boundaries between dimensions shattered like glass wasn't enough to burn through his time. Hell, he was only in Super Saiyan 1 when he did that. After going blue, Broly didn't stand a chance. Based on earlier in the film, Whis's reaction even implies that Gogeta could possibly take on Beerus. In Dragon Ball Heroes, Gogeta continues to prove he's one of the multiverse's S-tier fighters. He even defeated the Crimson Mask Super Saiyan Rose full power Goku Black and Ultimate God Slayer Hearts the God Hater. You know, those guys. And two Gogetas together could take on Fu. Just just, just Foo? After all that, he just called Foo? Dark King Foo, the <laughs> artificial bio-android demon mutant. Well, what a fucking name. That is one of the most metal names, but at the same time, that's a mouthful. Dark King Foo, the artificial bio-android demon mutant. It's kind of yes. like Bakugo's hero name ideas. Yeah. <laughs> Lord Murder Death. Yeah. yeah. Saiyan, Namekian, Earthling, Majin, and Eternal Dragon DNA. Is this fan fiction? Hearts the God Whiner. Yes. Who can become an no. entity akin to Zeno? That little blue baby who can erase a multiverse with a thought. But these Gogetas achieved even stronger forms than before. One was in Super Saiyan Blue Evolved, the boosted form Vegeta achieved during the Tournament of Power. The other was Super Saiyan 4, but not just any Super Saiyan 4. He was Super Full Power Saiyan 4 Limit Breaker. Ah. The 
my tongue is permanently twisted now. <laughs> These two forms fighting side by side implies that, at least in this iteration, both are similar, if not equal, in power. Ah, Gogeta's so cool! And there are tons of people who think he'd win this matchup! In Weekly Jump issue 28 from 1995, the fusion dance was stated to unify Goku and Vegeta's spirits and draw out their power to the max. As long as a fight with Vegito lasts less than 30 minutes, the magazine says Gogeta should win. And then in the video game Raging Blast, there's a what-if scenario where Gogeta beats Vegito in a sparring session. But he was about to run out of energy, so maybe it could have gone either way. Though with his power and skill, it's unlikely any opponent would push Gogeta to his limits. Two of the greatest warriors in history merge together as one. What more could you want as a fan, and what more could you fear as a foe? So yeah, that's, I mean, Gogeta pretty powerful, man. Gogeta is pretty insane, but there's there's a side that they didn't mention that was that was brought up in uh, Dragon Ball Super, uh, Ultra Instinct, because Ultra Instinct Goku and Ultra Ego Vegeta are like, uh, on top of being Super Saiyan, that that's like that adds to their power even more. And I... I'm sorry, but that... That Ultra they have Instinct... have they fused when they've been using the... Something? I don't think they have, though. That might be why they didn't bring it up. Mm, probably. It's the spring of 1995. A demonic menace has threatened to consume the world in chaos. Goku and Vegeta were pushed to the brink with only one option left. Fusion! They used one of their most incredible techniques to become a merged being of unimaginable power. Does this sound familiar? But there wasn't time to teach Vegeta an awkward dance routine he'd ultimately despise. Instead, they used the Patara. Only the gods themselves could rock bling like this. That's right, the Patara earrings come from the Kais, the gods that supervise the universes. By placing one earring on each person's opposite ear, the Patara forcibly fuses the two beings together. No power level matching required. Looked like those two case, gods go there were doing a, quite a bit of supervising, weren't they? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, that's why most efficient. of them died from Majin Buu. <laughs> and Vegeta fused to become Vegito. Okay, seriously, Vegito? Couldn't they have a better name? Eh, it's not that bad. And remember, Fusion Reborn started production well before Toriyama penned Vegito's first appearance. So, uh, do I call dibs on the better name, huh? But still, shouldn't it be like Vegiku? Not like that's much better either. Why? Vegito. It makes more sense in Japanese. Vegito is formed from the first half of Vegeta and the latter half of Kakaroto. This is why Viz Media actually translated it to oh. Vegerot. Oh, that one sucks too. Yeah. I'm bored now. Let's talk about how he blows shit up real good. Vegito has numerous techniques that are entirely his own, many of which are, fittingly, perfect combinations of Goku and Vegeta's signature moves, such as the final Kamehameha. What about Veku? Veku? Uh, Veku would have been decent, I think, maybe. Yeah. Veku, Veku, I think, would be a good... Would be a good one. A good short version. So it's balanced. It's got two letters from the beginning of Vegeta and two letters from the end of Goku. Or uh, Gota. I mean... Goku, Vegeta. I just assume they wanted to start with Vegeta on this one because it was a different kind of fusion than the Gogeta, you know? Yeah, probably. Vegeta's final flash, but fired like Goku's Kamehameha way. He's got a spirit sword, the Saiyan shield, and the Banshee blast. Which, no, it's not the ghost attack you're thinking of. With Goku and Vegeta's powers combined, Majin Buu was no match. Super Vegeta was so friggin' powerful that even being turned into candy didn't slow him down. <laughs> it just made him delicious. His level of power had transcended to such an impressive degree that he was capable of effectively ignoring having his matter entirely altered and his DNA eradicated. He continued on as the incredible fighting candy. No mouth, <laughs> no brains, no organs of any kind, and he still kept slapping around that big pink ass. Uh, Phrasing. Right? Yeah. yeah. That's what you're saying. Similar to how Vegeta overpowered Bobbity's mind control, or how Goku broke through Hit's time skip with Kaioken. A greater power level can overrule basically anything a weaker one does. Though, to be fair, the Super Candy is a pretty extreme example. But Vegito's a pretty extreme guy, even for the Dragon Ball multiverse. He later.
later got that godly blue hairspray and beat the crap out of Merged Zamasu, a double deity. Like a fusion dick measuring contest, but not at all close. Though similar to his dancing counterpart, Vegito's time ran out after he overtaxed himself. Which was kind of weird. Back in the day, they said these Batara fusions were permanent. Turns out it's only permanent for Supreme Kai's. Vegito's form can last up to one hour before splitting apart, but can be shortened severely if he goes full tilt. In the manga, Vegito formed after Zamasu fused and split apart when they expected Fuse Zamasu to have 20 minutes left, meaning he cut his time down to 40 minutes at most. Though in the anime, it was way less since he tried to quickly overpower Zamasu with a single attack. The Patara have their own set of rules. Unlike the fusion dance, this form is maintained by the power of the earrings, not the fusers themselves. As such, destroying the earrings ends the fusion. And if you slap the Patara on while in a Super Saiyan form, you can't power down while fused. So if Goku and Vegeta aren't careful, they can find themselves draining power when they don't need to. But surprise, Vegito's got into his own Super Dragon Ball Hero shenanigans, and he's got the full power red fur too. Look, Wiz, I think I'm having deja vu. Aside from uh, Goku, uh, he's battled heavy hitting threats to the multiverse like Cumber and Mechikabara. And just like with Gogeta, there's plenty of people who think Vegeta would win this fight. Daisenshu's 4 and 7, basically two Dragon Ball encyclopedias, claim that the Potara fusion is superior to the fusion dance. Old Ooh. Kai said this too. Yeah, see, that's, that's the Patara opposite of what I thought they said. They so that's the opposite of what I thought I remembered from Dragon Ball Z. But okay. hmm. yeah. They both may be referring to what was believed at the time to be a permanent fusion. Not having to worry about overspending your time limit would certainly be a greater effect if it were true. But hey, there's nothing that can get in the way of Vegito's awesome power. Gods and demons alike are no match. When there's no one strong enough to save the day, then perhaps two will do. Perhaps. This show is spot. All right, the combatants are set. We've run the data through all possibilities. Hear my wish, Eternal Dragon. It's time for a death battle! All right, gentlemen. Who you got? I can't make a guess this time. Well, I mean, it's a, it's the same guy, right? Yeah. I mean, it's the same two guys. It's just... The differences are, like... How long the fusions right. can last. Well, so one can go for, what, 30 minutes and one goes for an hour? I'm going with the guy that go for an hour. Okay. I mean... Makes sense. Because otherwise they're the same dude, basically. But destroying the earrings can undo it. So. That's true as well. well. That's true. Which technically it's a death battle, so... If they destroy the earrings and split them apart but don't kill them, wouldn't that render the battle moot? Potentially. Because they're no longer fighting Ve like Vegito at that point. They would be fighting Vegeta and Goku. Like it would be a death battle versus Vegeta and Goku. So it would be who won in the battle to the death between the two. <coughs> I'm getting real technical with it. Know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I would probably <clears throat> say... So uh, pro Mike has probably got the correct logic. Like, I would say if they can go longer with the earrings, they're just going to probably base the win on that. I'm just kind of glad that they're bringing in, like, the Super Saiyan 4 stuff. Because people are real hard on GT, and I know it's not technically canon. But, like, I thought some of the concepts in it were pretty good. Because Dragon Ball Z was kind of like... After Cell, I think it was kind of like, eh... Well, it started getting a little goofy in the Boo yeah. Saga. Come to find <clears> out the Boo <throat> Saga is actually not canon either. Oh. I didn't actually know that until I think Bone told me like last year or so when I was watching Dragon Ball. Um, Finally what? watching Dragon Ball for the first time. Huh? Apparently the Boo Saga is not actually in the manga. It's not canon. Um, no, it's, it's, it's there. That's what I was told. Also, I like the Super Saiyan 4, like it picked up on like, oh yeah, the Saiyan is a different species, like we're gonna kind of... Yeah, manga. Yeah, the Boo Saga is... It's in manga. I don't know where Bone was telling you that. I guess he lied to me. Maybe he didn't know. Maybe. But, yeah, the Boo Saga... Like, the whole Boo Saga. Wait, 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 hang on, hang on. 
Now, I remember now, I was looking it up. I was looking up a watch guide for Dragon Ball Z, and it was basically like, yeah, the canon ends at the end of the Cell Saga. And he was Someone, like, yeah, the Boo okay, Saga is Whoever not made canon. that's probably just a fan of Team Four Star, and because Team Four Star is not doing the Boo Saga, like, they're just like, oh, it must not be canon. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I love Team Four Star, but, you know, the Boo Saga is... Boo Saga is 100% like, like canon. Because there's some really awesome stuff in the Boo Saga, although it does get a little goofy sometimes. GT, I do agree with you, Micah. There are some concepts in it that are really good. I loved, uh, I loved the Super Saiyan 4 idea. Well, and like the, like the idea that, like, oh, you've been misusing the Dragon Balls, so they're going to fracture, and there's like this evil side to Shinron. I'm like, that's yeah. super cool. And then, of course, uh, Baby. I liked uh, Baby Vegeta. Like... Like when Baby had like taken over Vegeta. Oh yeah, I thought that was really cool. I I didn't really. I was kind of ambivalent about Goku getting turned to a kid because it's kind of felt like a throwback to Dragon Ball, but I didn't <clears> think it was necessary. That was that was silly on so many levels because mm. let's let's be honest here, we don't need Goku as a kid again. No, we already had that. Yeah, so that was kind of weird. And plus it and plus it being a. Uh, uh, Pilaf just it was like, oh, come on, dude, really? It's like, I remember, it's like, I wish you were a kid again. It's like, whoops. Oh, boy. That's very strange. Mm -hmm. I feel like timelines just shifted and changed again since I probably had so. that conversation mm -hmm. like last year. <laughs> yeah, probably. I mean, the large hadron collider you, needs to be shut off. You, Damn it, hadron collider! <laughs> you tumbled into this stream from the dark timeline. Yes. So you're both going Vegeta, right? I mean, otherwise that seems like the only difference to me. That's really all I know to base it on. Like, okay. <laughs> Madness. Whoa, Vegeta! Am I really that much taller than you? Stuff it, Kakarot! <laughs> Love that they got Lanny to be to be Vegeta. I'm gonna say the lookout will not survive this. See Master Roshi out on the out on the beach, just being like, "Wait, it, who in the hell is that out there?" <laughs> gotcha. Oh, in the time chamber now. Oh. Ooh. 
This bump. Oh, I broke him. So, Vegito wins. Oh man, that was epic! Totally worth Damn. the wish. Though I guess we probably could have solved a lot of world problems. Wasn't realistic though. World... You know why? Because they didn't spend two episodes powering over the <laughs> <laughs> Krillin didn't roll in with a Sinzu bean. Sinzu bean! <laughs> Oh gosh, oh, that that's one of my favorite bits from uh, Team Four Stars. The Sensubi, and he'd like hit someone in the head with it, and just like they're like passed out on the floor. It's like Go Gohan's neck has been broken by Raccoon. <laughs> he's like he's like here, Gohan, Sensubi, and then it just like it just like pff, hits the, hits the ground next to him. Like oh oh no, it's <laughs> fucked up. And then Goku, then Goku rises he's like. Here, Gohan picks him up, and you hear Gohan's neck like snapping while he's got it. He's like, <laughs> he's like, it's okay, kid. Hey, wake up. He's like, go, Goku, give him a sensu for God's sakes. He's like, oh yeah. And then he gives it to him. And he wakes up. He's like, huh? Why does my neck said? Why does my neck feel stiff? Dad. Ah, <laughs> oh. God, I miss Team Four Star doing, you know, doing good shit domination can wait another year this fight was incredibly close no seriously how could it not be they're almost exactly the same person mm -hmm. with a few minor differences here and there like signature attacks neither Vegito nor Gogeta had one single power that provided an absolute edge over the other except perhaps Vegito's longer time limit though it's not so clear-cut both have overtaxed their energy quick enough to end their fusions in less than 10 minutes. Time isn't the only factor, but also whatever is maintaining each fusion. Gogeta's body and Vegito's earrings. It's possible Vegito's power can actually drain the Patara faster than Gogeta's does his own body. Still, it's twice the time, and that definitely gave Vegito more flexibility and strategy. So more often than not, it's safe to say Gogeta would run out of juice first. Also, when Vegeta or Gogeta diffuse from power overuse, it's typically difficult for them to immediately fuse again due to that lack of energy. But Vegito had another one over Gogeta. No matter what, he'd always have a very slight power advantage. Remember how the fusion dance requires the fusers to match their power levels? Well, the Patara don't need that. Goku doesn't need to match Vegito's slightly lower power levels, so there's nothing stopping Vegito from combining the full sum of their parts. Ah, poor Vegeta. You'll get your day in the sun one day, buddy. Oh, who am I kidding? This might be no, what Kai was referring to when he said the Patara had a greater effect. But hey, could Gogeta have destroyed the earrings? Nope. He would have had to be able to overpower Vegito first, like how Goku could only destroy Kefla's earrings after he reached Ultra Instinct. Remember, when comparing levels of power in Dragon Ball, the greater one can overrule almost anything the weaker one does. The earrings likely tend to be protected by the user's key aura, similar to their clothing. The only time we've ever seen Patara damaged or specifically targeted are when the wearer is overwhelmed or in a vulnerable state. If any stray key blast could destroy them, we'd have a lot more broken earrings by now. Lastly, Makes there's sense. some debate over their personalities. In their first appearances, Vegito seemed rather cocky and playful against Boo, whereas Gogeta was far more deliberate against Janemba, and thus far more successful. However, these are not core personality traits, and assuming so would be inconsistent with Vegito's serious fight with Zamasu and Gogeta's more brash fights with Broly and Omega Shenron. Context yeah. is key. As far as personality and mental ability goes, Gogeta and Vegito are practically identical. In the end, Vegito's higher power level, no matter how slight it was, made a big difference in protecting and maintaining his longer, more flexible time limit. Gogeta was gonna need meta more than that to beat Vegito. Sorry, Wiz, I know that pun was potarable. Wait, shut up. Earth's Dragon Balls give two wishes, right? Oh, yeah. Hey, Shinron, I wish for you to fuse me and Wiz. Damn it. Oh, dear. Oh, God. I can only imagine what that's going to look like. I don't think we're going to get to see. Matchups <laughs> chosen by our champions. I just saw. Let's see what you picked. I did too. Little <laughs> Cypher. Oh, God. Oh. 
Bill Cipher versus Discord and Alex Mercer versus Cole McGrath. Oh, nice. Dude. Bill Cipher all the way. Who is Discord again? Uh, I think it's a My Little Pony thing. I don't know. Oh, okay. So I don't really care. I don't about care. I, 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 Alex, Alex Mercer. Mercer versus Cole McGrath sounds cool, though. Yeah. Basically, uh... Because those were very similar games around the same time, you know? I'll, uh, I'll I mean, I was a bigger though. fan of Infamous. The but. Infamous games are better put together. Yeah. But, but the, um... I forget what they're called. The Prototype. Prototype, thank you. But Prototype 1 was really good. I liked Prototype 1 a lot. Uh, the second one, I was like, I, I was hit or miss with it. But still, those are some great matchups. Anyway, though, yeah, that... <laughs> those... Yeah, that was a good death battle. I mean, a very close one. But I really do think the, the, the right one won. Because, you know, an hour long time limit on the on the earrings is really the only advantage that Vegeta would have over Gogeta. Mostly this death battle made me just want to go back and actually finish watching all the Dragon yeah, Ball I, Z stuff I haven't seen. I kind of feel like they were just like, jackpot, this is just an excuse to do a lot of really cool animation. Yeah. Because why not? I mean, yeah, it's, it's Toei. Toei, for Dragon Ball Z, Toei will do anything for that show because it it's what sent them... Over the like, over the moon in terms, especially in the United States. I think he was talking about death battle. Bro. Oh, death yeah. battle! Or, or I thought you were talking about. Uh, sorry about that. Ugh. Sorry, my brain. I'm it's like I'm uh, still cooked from the last. Gogeta two weeks. versus Vegeta was an excuse to do a lot of really cool animation. Movies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, fair enough with that. I wonder what all they're going to like. I mean, this is sort of like a final battle for uh, like Dragon Ball Z characters. I wonder what they're going to pull next for if they ever do Dragon Ball again. I mean, I, mean, I feel like they're just there's gonna such a huge cast in Dragon giving Ball. them more forms. I mean, I mean, Omega Shinron versus uh, uh who would do good against Omega Shinron? Hmm, I don't know. There's... I mean, like they just keep getting more forms now. It's like there's like Black Frieza and Gohan Beast. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Orange Piccolo, like. Orange Piccolo. I forgot about that. I mean, they just... They find a new threat. They get powerful with some new form. Like, I mean, that's just... This is true. This this is very, very true. Oh, God. So... It's like the Energizer Bunny. It keeps going and going and go. Mm -hmm. Until it gets shot by Charlie Sheen in Hot Shots Part 2. Somehow there are still less episodes than One Piece. Well, that's because Oda is just... Oda just doesn't know when to stop. That's what I'm convinced From of. What people talk about with it, he apparently has more ideas, too. So. Well... Than just new form, more galaxy-destroying capable enemy. Well, Toriyama, I mean... I mean, leave it to Toriyama to just keep coming up with crazy stuff to do with his characters. Huh. Dang it. Bless you. Thank you. You know those sneezes that just take too damn long to get to? <laughs> it's just like, it's like, it's like, just hurry up, damn it. <laughs> yeah. That's basically where I was with that. So yeah, this was, this was a good death battle overall. I'm really happy with it, and I can't wait to see more. I mean, Bill Cipher versus Discord. I might just watch that because, you know, I love Bill Cipher. He's one of my favorite villains ever and then of course Alex Mercer and Cole McGrath to like 2000 uh, late 2000 early 2010 uh, like big heroes on uh, on on the various platforms so I think that um, those two may be uh, I'm not 100% sure but I have like this feeling and I haven't ever really heard it analyzed but I think they may be responsible for the really good superhero games we've gotten since then. Because they were good superhero idea, like, style games, you know? Yeah. And then after we got, I believe it was after, that we got Arkham or Arkham Asylum as well as Spider-Man, obviously, later on. Let's see. When did uh, Prototype Game Series? First one came out 2009. 
And when did the first Infamous come out? Two thousand nine. So both came out like around that era. And then when did Arkham Asylum? There it is. Two thousand nine as well. God, two thousand nine. So maybe was a not great directly year. responsible. But, but well, no. Well, definitely say... though, after like the more open world of uh, like Infamous, it's possible that Arkham City was inspired slightly by that. Probably. I mean, yeah, the, the open world of this. I mean, plus, Prototype's open world was also pretty damn good as well. All, thing, like, all things considered. I mean, it, it... Arkham Asylum was, like, open world, but they were only on Arkham Island. It wasn't huge or anything. Yeah, whereas Arkham City, it was everything. You could go anywhere within Arkham City, and then... Arkham Asylum feels more akin to, like, a Metroidvania than it does, like, a uh, actual open world game. Mm. Where you're kind of confined to, like, a singular location, even though you're free to roam the whole location for the most part. Yeah. It's yeah. like, uh, give or take a couple areas that open up only when you get certain things that can let you in them. Yeah, and I think that's a... I think, yeah, it's more like a 3D Metroidvania. I can see that. I can see that app comparison. So it's kind of like Control. Like, they consider Control to be the same thing. You're free to roam basically the entire building, provided you have whatever tools you need to get through certain areas. Yeah. But you're in the same building for the whole game. So yeah. They consider it a 3D Metroidvania for that reason. Well. <sighs> yeah, either way, though, the, I, 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 I want to see these two death battles coming up. We'll see what happens. So, until next time, everybody, signing off. I'm Nate. I am Nick. Micah. Take care, everybody. Peace.